Uh, good morning. Uh, so my name is uh, David Glennon. I'm the Digital Delivery Director um, at the Red Sea. Um, I'll, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, what the project is, just so you, I can give you some of the context and why the digital transformation um, is so important. The project itself is one of the, the Giga projects, so it's supported by the Public Investment Fund. And the point of this project is to open up hospitality into Saudi Arabia. So there's a number, a number of new jobs that are going to be created as well as contributing to the economy, but the, the main drive is to diversify the economy with less reliance on oil. You can see here our board, as I say, uh, supported by the Public Investment Fund. So I'll describe a little bit about the, the project itself and you'll start to see why sustainability in the environment is so important. There's a number of endangered species you'll see, um, hopefully get to visit. It's got absolutely crystal clear water. It is, I mean, it's absolutely stunning environment. So one of the concerns are is that if we end up destroying that through, um, through our activity on site, we're going to effectively destroy um, our product as well. Hence, we're really aiming to do something pioneering with regards to regenerative development. You can see uh, some of the examples here. I'm looking for a 100% renewable energy use, no single-use plastics we'll find on site, 30% net positive conservation benefits. So it's not just about um, aiming for zero. It's about you know, really improving what, what's, um, what's going on there. And on the right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see the, the number of jobs that we're trying to create and the contribution to, to GDP. So it's not just about creating the, um, you know, the, the, the assets. It's also about um, you know, do, doing, doing something in the economy. And, and the way I'm looking at it is leave a legacy. And this is where I get excited about it from a digital delivery perspective, leaving a digital legacy uh, within, uh, within the kingdom. Um, so you can see sustainability is one of the challenges. I'll also highlight here, if you look at it, some of the examples of the assets, it's um, you know, hyper-luxury, luxury, you know, the, the quality of these are, are going to be super high. We've got a, a number of different assets that we're going to be creating. And then this is the, the other challenge that we have, is the, the timeline. So if you, um, if you can see here, uh, phase one development, that's aimed for the end of 2022. So it gives us just over 500 days to get some of these assets open for open visitors. Um, some examples we have here, so we've got um, Umar Hattel Sheikh um, out over the water, some over water villas. So certainly one of my favorites, we have uh, Southern Dunes down here out, um, you know, out in the dunes. So we're going to see some of these assets and, and, and the airport as well um, open in 500 days. So you can see that there's another challenge there. But if we start to look at some of the challenges that we have here, it starts to give context to what we're doing from a digital delivery perspective. This is uh, the, the digital strategy, sort of split into three. We've got first, which is project-centric. This is really us building our platforms, building our behaviors. Second one's around data centricity. Um, so we're, it's how do we start to get value from that data and really improve what we're doing on the project? Then the final one is around customer centricity. So how can we improve the customer experience when, you get, uh, when we start to receive guests to site, uh, uh, to, to the resorts? Um, all three have started at the same time, um, so we're, it's, it's not linear, I suppose, as it's shown here. Um, I think where we are now, we're probably, I'd say we're out of that project-centric phase. We've got our platforms in place, we've really started to change the behaviors, um, that the contracts, how we're contracting, uh, reflects that as well. We're now heavily into, into the data centricity, so it's trying to, trying to you know, um, harness the value that's in that, um, within those platforms to help us drive forward. BIM has been absolutely essential to us as an organization. As we've gone through the period of remote working that we've had over the last sort of like 14, 15 months, by putting that platform in place, using a common data environment, we've been able to continue to work with our project partners uh, internationally. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we're the ones that put that platform in place. We, we sort of encourage, heavily encourage people to use it so that we could um, continue to, to operate at pace and to collaborate effectively with our, with our project partners. Um, so that, that was probably the, 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 the big early benefit that we got. Um, I think as we move on from that, if you're starting to look at the remote nature that we have, the high quality that we need to achieve and to reduce on waste on our projects, off-site manufacturing is one of our key um, delivery methods. And again, working in a digital way by using design for manufacture and assembly um, techniques where you know, we've really sort of supercharged the off-site manufacturing uh, work so that we're um, uh, able to you know, hit the pace, hit the quality and reduce that waste. Um, there's, there's some quite simple things that we've been doing. So, um, you know, just overlaying our BIM and GIS platforms. Um, not everything has to be massive. Uh, so, so some of the things that we're doing here, uh, it's just, um, you know, really enabling our construction team to manage their logistics in a more effective way. Uh, it could be, um, you know, tr trying to uh, understand what the, the, the cut and fill is going to look like on site. Again, the, so, so some of these are starting to reduce the timelines to get these things done from, from days down to hours. Um, and every time we find one of those, um, that's actually going to you know, really help us hit, hit those deadlines. 
Um, so these, oh, I suppose the, the other big one that we've had, uh, we've had some you know, really good wins by employing lean design principles. So for example, when our data comes in from our supply chain, um, rather than going through a sort of long two, three, four week uh, review process, um, as soon as the data comes in, we'll pull everyone together into a room, it's called a big room review, and very quickly start to understand where the key, uh, the key decisions are, or what some of the key issues are, and very quickly we can work, uh, relay that to our project partners and continue to work at pace. Um, we can then spend the, the, the next few days after that, or the next couple of weeks after that, going into more detail, um, but by just turning that on its head and using the data and the information that we've got and working in a more collaborative way, um, we've been able to re reduce some of those review timelines from weeks, as I say, from weeks down to, down to days, and in some cases, it's been down to hours. So just focusing on some of the, the data centricity aspects, as I said, we've, we've got those platforms in place, and now we're trying to um, you know, really understand what we can do with the data. I think automation has been one of the, the really interesting um, wins that we've had, um, you know, it was last year as well. We looked at over 100 different processes um, and started to apply some lean principles to those. And again, uh, some of them can be quite small. It could be a payment process. Um, certainly the QA, QC, I've seen some big wins at. But these are processes that we've taken down from taking days down to hours. Uh, and it's not just about achieving that pace so we can continue to hit these tight timelines, but it's also about freeing people up to do the work that they should be doing. So getting to use their brains, their training and education to really make a difference on, the, um, on our projects. Same can be said for our um, dynamic cost modeling processes that we're using. So we're linking uh, cost databases to, to the data that sits within the models, um, which again enables us to um, you know, make decisions much quicker. Um, uh, but we're also starting to use uh, some a AI through our vendors, um, starting to bring all this data together to really understand where, um, you know, starting to look forward as to how we're delivering this project rather than necessarily looking um, in our rear view mirror to understand what has happened. Um, and I suppose that the, the last one, we've got a proof of concept at the moment where we've got our, uh, we've got some cameras on site, uh, we're using reality capture, bringing that data in, overlaying that with our scheduled data, overlaying that with our BIM data, so when we have people out on site, or even remotely, we can start to see is what is on site where it should be, and, and some further QAQC opportunities. What we're trying to create is you know, very high customer experience for the people that come to our resorts. So very similar to the smart cities that people have spoken about for the last couple of years, but very much focused on those. We, are, during the construction phase, we're taking um, information from sensors, bringing that back into our platforms in the middle, um, and it could be for something like um, you know, smart workforce management that we saw earlier from uh, Saudi Aramco, but we're treating that as an incubator. If we can get some value from that during the construction phase, uh, we can then learn some lessons ready for when we're in operations. And in the last couple of seconds, um, that I think one of the key things that we've seen is a big success is using lean startup principles. So we've taken this from a lot of work that's that was done out in Silicon Valley during the last couple of booms. We're looking to Rather than making a big bet on what a project is going to look like and hope that the final product is correct, uh, we've been very iterative with what we're doing. So every time we, uh, we do something, we release it, get feedback from our stakeholders, um, and so we're able to continue to move the project quickly, but with some surety that the end product is going to be um, you know, better. Thank you very much.